In today's video, we'll be going over the best PvP settings for Destiny. I sectioned this video off in three parts. Video settings, which I even throw in a secret setting no one really knows about. And then the last two sections are specifically mouse and keyboard settings and then controller settings. I personally will be going over the video and mouse and keyboard settings. And since I don't play controller, I brought one of my good friends over to talk about it, which just to give a backbone to what we're saying. In trials, my KD is over 2.0 with over a thousand flawlesses, majority of them being carries. And my friend Akaijin, check him out, link in the description for the past two seasons has been playing at about a 2.4 and also has about a thousand flawlesses with the majority of them being carries. I don't say this to brag, just to show you that we kind of know what we're talking about. Let's get right into it. Let's go over the video settings first. So for the best frame rate, you want to use full screen. Make sure VSync is off. And as far as the frame rate cap, I would set this to the refresh rate of your monitor. I have a 144, so that's what I kept mine at. FOV 100% with its highest. I know of some controller players who lower this a bit and it has something to do with aim assist, but I'm not 100% sure. So I highly recommend max FOV, screen bounds. Now this is a very interesting one. I always set this to max because I mean, that's what the game tells you. But my friend Gold Eagle taught me, if you put this to the smallest possible, your radar is actually closer to the middle of your screen. Meaning you don't have to look as far to see your radar. Brightness, I played at like four or five for a long time and just recently put this up to seven. I don't think there's a competitive advantage to playing seven. All of my graphic settings are the lowest possible. For the additional video part, I put this to a hundred. This is just off 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 and if you have nvidia reflux put this on on plus boost now let's get into the secret setting that ups your fps what you're going to want to do is open a file explorer and at the top here type in percent app data percent then hit enter now you're going to want to click on bungie destiny pc crafts now this file right here cvars.xml you're going to make sure you want to open this with notepad now scroll down until you find local light shadows the lowest possible the game will allow you to put this is one so when you see that you're going to go ahead and want to change this to zero and just make sure you save it now if you close your game and reopen it you will notice a visual difference specifically in your character screen this essentially just gets rid of shadows you don't really care about but does up your fps and if you're worried this will get you banned i along with many well-respected pvp streamers have been doing this for a long time so you will not get banned now let's move on to the input based settings all right so firstly for the look sensitivity and the ads sensitivity what you're going to want to do is Honestly, just test these out. There's no real answer. There's not like a best put this on full or do this, do that. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure your look sensitivity mixed with your DPI on your mouse. You're gonna wanna make sure this feels very nice for you. You're able to move around. This ADS sensitivity modifier is very important. So what this means is when you're aimed in, this will literally multiply your sense and that's how fast it is. So let's say you're playing on one. It'll be exactly when you aim in, your sense will be exactly the same. Let's say if you're on the max 1.5, when you're aiming in, it's going to be faster. So typically the rule of thumb is you want 1.0 or less. I personally play on 0.7. Vertical and horizontal inversion, please just turn this off. This quite literally means if you have horizontal inversion on, when you move your mouse to the left, you will look to the right. Please keep both of these off. Aim smoothing also, please just turn this off. It actually just makes your aim more smooth if you have this off. It tries to like correct it and it just makes it weird. Please keep this off. So with keybinds, it's the same as sensitivity. There's no real right or wrong, but I'll give you a couple keybinds you probably should do. First, let's start off with charged versus uncharged melee. By default, your melee is just one button. If you have your ability, it uses it. If you don't, it doesn't use it. I highly suggest you make a separate button for your charge melee, which means it will only use your melee ability and uncharged melee, which will only use your regular melee, even if you have the ability. Another suggestion is use hold crouch a lot of people use toggle all this really does is if you hit your crouch button once you will crouch down and then back up whereas toggle hitting it once only puts you down now a suggestion i make for your weapon swapping is first of all please don't look at my keybinds they're horrible is i would suggest if you swap your weapons simply just by spamming scroll wheel sometimes you fumble it sometimes you're pulling out your shotgun on the accident what i would suggest is putting your energy weapon to down on scroll wheel, then your kinetic weapon to up on scroll wheel. This just makes it to where you know exactly what you're wanting to pull out. Then you can make your heavy either pushing your mouse button in or a random button. Uh, yo, Jomo, uh, Yeah, no, nah, this kid, yeah, never mind. Just chat, I'll just do it. That's fine. Yo, Jomo here asked me to go over some controller settings for you guys. So I play on 20 look sense and 0.7 ADS, similar to MNK. You definitely don't want to be going above one for your ADS settings. Look sensitivity is a bit more nuanced. I personally believe just play the highest you can actually like aim with. 
So if that's 12, then play on 12. Because you don't want to end up in a situation where you turn too slow and you can't react to certain situations. What would you say is the most common controller sensitivity? Yeah, 14.5 is what I think the most common sensitivity is. Okay, so if you don't know, if you're completely confused, start on that. And then like Axe said, if you can go higher, go higher. Same with MK, don't use inverted, not really worth, unless you're a psycho and you play flight games, I don't know. But <laughs> next setting is auto look centering. Please, for the love of God, <laughs> do not have this on. <laughs> like, this is actually just so horrible. It will automatically move your camera if you're like looking at the ground or something to the middle. You don't want any external input like affecting your aim or whatnot. So definitely just leave this off. Next setting is sprint turn scale. I would say everyone should max this out. Essentially what it does, it just allows you to do tighter turns. Uh, all any OG players who play D2 would remember traction. It's basically just traction, but a little bit better because I think 0.7 is the original traction. So they mm. you can do even tighter turns. Vibration off, obviously. No one likes controller vibration. So for double press delay, you want to just uh, lower this as much as possible. Close as one. Basically, if you do end up running double press for any of your abilities or whatnot, you don't you don't want any extra input delay. Just for an explanation, I'll put like a visual on screen. What this setting is doing is just making the window bigger or smaller for the double press to actually work or not. So again, if you're crouch spamming with a bigger window, you're more likely to accidentally pop your rift or whatever button it is. All right, now to the most important thing, dead zones. Future Jomo coming in here. We had about a 15 minute discussion on how to explain dead zones. So I had to cut this up. And if it doesn't make full sense, please ask questions in the comments and I can explain. Yeah, just firstly, start, let's start with explaining dead zones. So dead zones are essentially an area on your controller where there's just dead space. And if you move it into that space, it doesn't actually give you any input. Like a there's response. Nothing. Yeah, no input. Yeah. So the lower this goes, the more con uh, responsive your controller will feel. So ideally, in a perfect world, you want to lower this as much as humanly possible while like still being able to maintain control. Radial, all you're pretty much wanting is you want to set that as low as possible. Check if you have stick drift. If you do, put it up one. And you keep repeating that until you see no stick drift or noticeable stick yep. drift. Like you said, you kind of play with a little bit of stick drift because you're used to it. But that's the staple yep. people want. You go until to where they don't see until stick you drift. Yeah, exactly. Now with Axio Dead Zone, essentially what this is, is think of it as the higher this is, the more the game will help you make straight lines going up and down or left to right. Yep. So yeah. if let's say you had this on a million setting of a one trillion percent, you have the straightest line known to mankind. But the lower you have it, the more raw input it'll be so let's just say you had it on zero it will be precisely exactly the movement you're making with your analog stick so that's why yep, exactly. and then you said that one is a little more personal preference right because that probably just has to do with your aim like how you flick right you might want like, it a bit it, more it's wrong, how you hold your controller also like factors how like how straight your lines are we'll put it as simple as this you're kind of gonna have to test it it's similar to like what you said about sense you're kind of gonna have to test this is more per case basis so i would say as a, a good baseline I would say start at like 0.08. I would say is a good baseline. And then for radial dead zones, start at like 0 0.03, 0 0.04. Now onto the key binds for controller. While we recorded this, we made it a bit confusing. So I'll make a very simple explanation right now. Broadly speaking, there are three types of controller players. Number one are the people who play default. You don't hold the controller in a special way. You don't have any special additions to your controller. None of that. Number two are people who play with paddles. This could be a scuff controller, pretty much anything with buttons in the back. Number three are people who play claw, which is just the most common variation of holding a controller. And if you play claw, let me know in the comments, because when I play controller, I play claw anywho so of these three groups i will give suggestions of keybinds based on how you play so if you're just the default joe who has a normal controller and doesn't hold it any weird way that'll give you arthritis aka suggested putting your crouch as your right stick and also making to where all your abilities are on circle on a single press this basically makes it to where you can never accidentally be trying to crouch but pop your warlock rift or titan shield now if you play claw he essentially made the same exact suggestion but said to put your abilities as right stick push in and your crouch as circle now for paddles let's say you only have two paddles he thinks you should put one as crouch and the other as interact meaning when you go to res your teammate your other fingers are free to hold down your paddle to res but still move and shoot and this way you could put your class ability on any button you really want that's all for this complete guide on destiny settings for pvp i really hope you guys enjoyed i would appreciate if you guys do subscribe as youtube says 96 percent of you guys aren't subbed thank you for watching